Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how I built my fish room. It involves refurbishing all six of these tanks, building the stands, and uh, setting them all up, leak testing them, filling them. So, thanks for watching. So this is about uh, three, four hours worth of scraping with razor blades. This coating is really tough. It must be some kind of epoxy or something. So I decided to break down and get some paint stripper. And I did a test batch on uh, one of the center dividers and it doesn't appear to have done any damage to the glass after 24 hours. So I'm about to coat this area. I'm gonna lay down painter's tape on each end just so that it doesn't seep under the trim. I'm gonna just live with the top part section being painted blue and the bottom part because I don't want to strip off the uh, braces and do that and then have to reattach the braces. So I think when you're looking at it, this set top section will be out of the water so you won't really be able to see that blue. And then with any substrate in the bottom, you won't see that blue. But that's my plan right now. I'm gonna lay down painter's tape so it doesn't seep down lay it down on there, let it sit for at least six hours, and then come back and scrape it. Just because it'll, in the meantime, I could scrape one tank in about six hours, where if I let this stuff sit, soak in, I'll be able to strip almost all of them. So, we'll check in once I get there. All right, you can see I got the painter's tape laid out. I decided to also put it on the edges because I don't want any of the paint stripper getting into the seam where the two glass panels meet. I am replacing the silicone, but you can see I'm only replacing the silicone that makes up the nice bevel here. So I'm leaving the actual construction or uh, structural silicone alone. I'm not going to delaminate each corner, separate it into separate pieces of glasses and redo it. Because all that silicone seems to be holding just fine. I don't see any damage or bubbles or anything in it. So now I'm just going to take this paint stripper squirt it out here and I'm gonna spread it around with a putty knife and try to get somewhat of a uniform layer all the way across just as I was doing this I had an idea that since this outer layer is so much tougher than the paint underneath I think what I'm gonna do is take some 60 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna rough up this outer layer until I can see the finished paint below You can see there's some blue showing through there now. It's not going to have to strip through quite as much if I take away that outer layer. So sanding it seems to have made a world of difference. It's only been an hour. You can see these areas that are already bubbling up. That's where I sanded a little deeper than most spots and you can see now it comes right up whereas before in the dry areas I'm scraping, scraping, scraping. This is way better. Way better. Thank goodness this is working. Alright, so I've kind of got a system down now. I've got this side completely finished of this tank. I've got that end completely finished. I'm about to start this one. Um, I'm 90% on the back of that one, I have both ends to do. All three of these I haven't even started. This one here, the silicone's been cut out. I'm 90% on the back. I'm like 50% on the side. So we're getting there. 
I kind of have a system in place where we start with the 60 grit paper and loosen everything up, get down to the blue. And then I hit that with the paint stripper and that eats everything up and it just peels right off and I stop when I'm close to the edge, about half inch from the edge. And half inch from the edge all the way around I just have to hard scrape with the razor. And then after that there'll be a little bit of blue left and what I can do is you take uh, this steel wool, this is double up, grade zero zero they call it, and you just rub this and it's going to strip all the light paint off and it's going to leave a super clean finish without scratching it. So I'm going to use this inside and outside before I caulk them. So, yep, I'm going to keep going. So on this tank here, I've got it completely cleaned. I got all the paint stripped. I've uh, pulled the center divider out and I have stripped all the caulk. I'm going by doing the fine cleaning and in all the tutorials I watched, they always tell you to use rubbing alcohol or acetone on a paper towel and wipe it down and only use a little as to not get it into the seams to separate. I'm going to use it in the area where there are no seams. And see, I still have plenty of caulk residue here. So we're going to do a little test here, a little comparison. So that works pretty good. But as you can see, it doesn't really take off the silicone, it takes off just the residue. So what I propose to use is, again, steel wool. I have a feeling this is going to strip the caulk, and it's going to take care of the residue. So, there's that piece of caulk again. Just wipe it over a couple times. And that caulk's gone now. And with this, the steel wool, you don't have to worry about it seeping into the seams and leaching through and, uh, you know, separating your panes of glass. So I think I'm just going to move forward with this and not use the alcohol. I might use a little bit before I glue just to make sure it's completely clean. But for all my cleaning purposes of stripping caulk and residue, I'm going to use this. So I figured while the silicone was drying, I'd move on to painting. I've done two coats of Rust-Oleum so far, and a little trick I figured out here to tell when you're getting thick enough, because as you see, this looks like it's fully black, it's got enough coats, but if you take a light source and put it underneath, you can see all the spots that are going to need additional paint. You wouldn't otherwise know. See when the light's off. Looks like it's all painted. So that's a good trip. Okay. So I'm not going to mask tape around uh, my silicone caulk. Uh, lots of people say you should to get a clear line, but I'm pretty confident that I'm going to be able to do a good enough job with just my spreading tool. So my plan is to go around to the perimeter do the verticals and then get the center divider and all before the uh, bottom dries. 
You know what, maybe I'll revise that. I think I'll do the verticals first and the bottom last so it's as pliable as possible because I'm going to need to place this within the caulk, fix the joint, and then caulk it vertically. This is my first corner. No masking tape. I think that looks pretty good. This is a factory silicone. It's about that wide. That'll do just fine. Okay, so everything came out really good. The hardest part is definitely the center divider. So I did get it in the end. It looks halfway decent. A lot of what you see too is residue because this is used to be a saltwater tank. So something about the old caulk had stained it. Everything else went really well. It was just that center divider. I think I need some way to hold it in place. Some kind of clamps or something. Get the light over here. So right now I'm doing the leak test on my first one. I'm going to start by filling up one half to make sure it doesn't leak into the other half and then I will fill up the other half and so far I'm not seeing any leaks I got these lights from Menards smart electrician uh, 47 inch part number 348 -0108. And I'm going to light up all the fish tanks, all six of them with these. I got six of them. They were on sale for $12.99 a piece. I hung one up to test it. And let me show you. I was worried that being that these are so cheap that they wouldn't be bright enough. Oh no, these are bright enough. It's beautiful. What a good deal, 13 bucks a piece. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, pretty soon I'll be uploading another video showing off all my new fish and some other projects. If you're wondering how the bowfin's doing, he's doing great.